This is the last video in this series of solving systems of equations. Uh, the reason why this video was made was because there are some special cases in systems of equations that you guys need to be concerned about. So a special case means it's not always going to happen, but when it happens, we need to understand, I guess, why uh, this happens. What's the reason for this? So let's work on this particular problem here. I want to solve this by elimination. Okay. So elimination means I can add, I can subtract, I can multiply to get rid of a variable. If I look at my x's, they automatically cancel out because negative 5 plus 5 is 0. But then if I look at my y's, negative 7 plus 7 is also 0. So on the left hand side, I have nothing, which in this case I just have 0. If I add the right side together, I get 4. I have no variables left over, and the 0 doesn't equal 4. It, it really doesn't, right? 0 does never equal 4. I wish it did. That'd be awesome. My bank account would be a lot you know, greater. Maybe not a lot greater, but a little bit. So what happens? Well, when I have no variables and it equals a number that's not 0, or both sides don't equal itself, we have what we call no solution. Why is that? Let's look, look at the graphs behind these two actual equations. I'm not going to do them exactly, but I'm going to show you kind of what they look like. So if I look at the first equation, I'll do this in black. Okay, so I'll make a box around it. This equation will be done in black. Okay, that means that I am going to have uh, that line look something like that. Okay, it's not going to look exactly like that, but it's going to look somewhat close. Let's do the second equation in blue. If I look at that equation, okay, that is going to look something like this. Again, not perfect because I'm not actually going through it. But if I look at them, they're what we call parallel lines. And that means that they will never, ever touch. Okay, they're always going to be parallel, what we call equidistant from one another. Remember we talked about uh, systems of equations where the, the solution is where the lines touch. These lines will never touch. That is why the answer is no solution, because there's no numbers that will work. Let's go to another instance here. So if I look at the top one and the bottom one, they look actually exactly the same, but let's figure out what the special case is going to look like. Because the x's are the same and the y's are the same, I am going to change my sign. So flip the 4x, flip the 2y, and I'm going to flip the 12. When I do that, I get 0 equals 0 when I add them. Okay. So this one here, both sides are now equal. So that means that this answer is going to be all real numbers or infinitely many solutions. Okay, or infinite solutions, that's fine as well. Here's the reason for that. If I were to again look at the graphs of these equations, so let's do the top one in black again, and let's graph it. So that one there looks like that. That's the, the first one. Okay. Let's again do the second one in blue. If I were to graph that one, it's the same exact line. Okay. So I put the black one and the blue one right on top of one another. So where do they actually touch? These two lines would literally touch each other everywhere in the plane. Okay, they would always touch each other everywhere. I know it sounds bad, but that's what happens. Okay, so that is why we have infinitely many solutions. That means any number I put in, I'm going to get the same point, same ordered pair for both equations to basically equal itself. Let's go to this example here. This is now a three variable system. Again, special case. We need to understand what is actually happening. 
So I want to eliminate some S's. The reason why I want to eliminate S's is because S's, there, there isn't any from the top one. So if I can eliminate the S's from the middle and the bottom, then I can use the middle and the bottom, whatever that gives me, with the top, and I can go from there. So let's add the second and third one because my S's are going to cancel. So let's add them up. So 3R, S's are gone, minus 2T equals 19. So now I have an equation with no s. Let's write the equation from the top underneath it because that doesn't have an s as well. Equals negative 6. Now let's add because the r's are opposites, right? So that's 0. Oh, negative 2 plus 2 is also 0. Equals uh, 13. Well, 0 equals 13. 0 never equals 13, I wish it did, then I would have $13 in my bank account. Okay, so what does that mean from before? That means we have a no solution. Okay, now remember we talked about three variable systems are planes. These planes in space will never touch each other at the same exact point. I could have two planes that touch and then the other plane touches and so on, but they'll never all touch in one spot. Okay, so that's why it is a no solution problem. This is the last example that we'll do. This is the last special case for three variable systems. So let's look at the top one and the bottom one. Okay, I can just add and my R's will cancel. Um, just makes it easy that way. So when I do that, I get, well, let's just write it. Let's go 4R minus 3S plus T equals 19 and negative 4r minus 2s minus 6t equals 6. Let's add them up. That gives me negative 5s's minus 5t equals 25. A lot of 5's. Then um, let's multiply this middle one by 4. And if we multiply that one by 4 and then add it to the top one, it'll then cancel. Let's rewrite the top one as 4r minus 3s plus t equals 19. Let's multiply the middle one by 4. So I get negative 4r plus 16s plus 12t equals negative 84. So when I add these two equations, I get 13s plus 13t is equal to 65. That's negative. So now let's rewrite that up here underneath my other equation with the S's and T's in them. So 13S plus 13T equals negative 65. Now let's go through this. I want to get rid of, let's say my S's, right? So let's multiply the top one by 13, the bottom one by 5, and let's go from there. So 13 times negative 5 is negative 65s minus 65t equals 325. Now let's do the bottom. 5 times 13 is 65s plus 65t equals negative 325. So because my s's are the same, I get 0. t's are the same, I also get 0 equals 325 minus 325 is also 0, so I get 0 equals 0. That means that these three planes graph the same plane in space. So it's you're basically, instead of the lines being all the same, it's the planes are now all the same. So that means my answer is infinite solutions or infinitely many solutions. Either one of those is fine. All real numbers, you can put that up there as well. Okay, so that means anytime I put a number in, X, an R, an S, and a T, and I'll get the same value for every single problem. This concludes the special case systems of equations video. If you need help on anything other than special cases, please watch the previous ones.